Hello, in this presentation I will introduce geometric methods for computing forward kinematic models for the most common robot arms. The main goal of the presentation is to carry out a study of the forward kinematic model of a robot arm using a geometric or trigonometric approach. It is a very simple study in which we will see the forward kinematic model of a coplanar robot with two degrees of freedom. Then we will compute the end effector position of a serial manipulator robot with three degrees of freedom and we will also study the four linkage mechanism. Finally, we will see how to compute the position of the end effector of a parallelogram robot arm, which combines the structure of a three degrees of freedom serial robot with a four linkage mechanism. The two degrees of freedom coplanar robot is a robot that is used in many academic examples to learn kinematics and dynamics of robots. The importance of this mechanism is that all its elements are contained in the same plane and operates in a R2-S1 space, which greatly simplifies the maths. This coplanar structure appears in many of the real robots and that's why it's an important mechanism to start with. For example, it appears in links 2 and 3 of a serial manipulator, also in a collaborative robot and also in parallelogram robot arm. In addition to this, a scalar robot also has a coplanar structure in its links, 1 and 2 in this case. In the following, we will study the maths to obtain the position of point P2 from joint variables Q1 and Q2 with trigonometric methods. In this robot, we will refer as link 0 or robot base to the link that is painted in white, while link 1 is painted in green and link 2 is painted in blue. The joints of the robot are those that link together links 0 and 1 and links 1 and 2. Both are parallel axes, perpendicular axes to x and y and x1 and y1, and for this reason, all the elements are contained in the same plane. Point P2 is easily is or can be easily computed just given the length of the link 1. The coordinates of the point P1 are indicated in equation 1. On the other hand, the position of point P2 with respect to P1 is as indicated in equation 2. If we add up both coordinates, we obtain the coordinates of point P2 with respect to the base of the robot, as indicated in equation 3. Therefore, equation 3 represents the direct or a forward kinematic model of a coplanar robot with two degrees of freedom, in which we can express the coordinates of the end effector with respect to the robot base. A robot with three degrees of freedom, like the one shown in the figure, allows to establish the positioning of the robot wrist, and it's a structure that is widely used in many industrial robots, specifically in serial manipulators, collaborative robots, and also in the parallelogram robot arm. It has four links. The white one is the fixed base, and it's known as link zero. The purple one is link one, the first rotary link, while the green one is link two, and the blue one is link three. The first joint is a vertical joint and its value is defined by the angle Q1, while the other two joints are horizontal joints and their values are defined by angles Q2 and Q3 respectively. All mobile links are contained in the same plane as previously seen. Equation 4 represents the position of point P3 with respect to P1. This is actually based on the formulation of the coplanar robot that we have seen before. So, to express P3 with respect to the robot base, we must take into account that the x coordinate of point P13 and angle Q1, in this case, represent the first two cylindrical coordinates of point P3, while the y coordinate of point P13, together with the height H1, represents the height of a cylinder. This is actually expressed in equation 5. The four linkage mechanism is a simplest or one of the simplest closed kinematic chains 
and yet appears in many real-life applications. In robotics, we find this mechanism as part of the elements of a robot when we want to transform the rotation from one axis to another and usually the input and output links do not rotate completely, also known as rocker or crank, with limited range of movement. The bar joining both links is known as coupler, while the fixed bar is just simply known as base. In a parallelogram robot arm with a parallelogram structure, there are up to three four linkage mechanisms. Two of them are used to form the parallelograms in order to ensure that the gripper is horizontal and that they are the ones that appear here in the figure in the rear part with a vertical and horizontal pattern. Uh, these two uh, are not of much interest here, since the motor that controls one of the fundamental elements is linked to. This is directly coupled to it, uh, from the rear uh, side, in this case. The interesting mechanism for us is the one that uh, shown at the front side, uh, which is made up four, bar, uh, four bars that I have colored. In green we have link 2 in a typical robot arm. For the moment we will assume that this is a fix, uh, in this case is the, the base of the four linkage mechanism. In red I have colored the input link 3 that is connected to the servo motor that indirectly moves the output link 3 colored in blue. The orange bar is the coupler. Once the elements of the four bar mechanisms are known, we can derive the relationship between the input and output angles with simple tri trigonometric maths. First, we will obtain the distance L between points B and C. Based on the law of cosines, we can establish a relationship between uh, the sides of the triangle ABC, with AB and AC known, as well as the input gamma angle here. Therefore, in equation 6, uh, we just simply can marginalize out the distance L and noting that the triangle ABC can be divided into two right triangles with the same height, we can also obtain the angle alpha in equation 7. Now, we can apply the law of cosines again in triangle BCD but this time we marginalize out the angle beta since the three sides of the triangle are known, as shown in formula 8. Once alpha and beta are known, we can compute the output angle Q3O, noted here, which represents the angle of the third link of the robot as if we had a conventional serial manipulator. So, if we and now take into consideration that the green bar is not fixed but depends on the angle Q2, we have that the gamma angle is actually a combination of the angles Q2 and Q3. The exact formula uh, will highly depend on how the motors are assembled, uh, since manufacturer uh, will indicate which is uh, the zero position for each of the joints and uh, its positive direction of rotation. But well, Okay, and specifically in this robot, the MIARM robot, as you can see in the figure below, has two servos uh, that have been assembled in such a way that Q2 with 90 degrees implies that the green bar is vertical and the motor turns counter uh, clockwise, while Q3 with 90 degrees implies that the red bar is horizontal and rotates clockwise. Based on this, we can uh, 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 compute the angle gamma corresponding to equation 10 in this case. On the other hand, expression uh, 11 corresponds to the forward kinematics of the four linkage mechanisms and expression 12 in this case is the one that corresponds to the forward kinematics of the robot with three degrees of freedom that we have previously seen. With all that, we can get the actual position of the end effector of the, this robot. Well, in this presentation, a study has been carried out regarding the computation of forward kinematics of robots with geometric methods. Thank you very much.